Vitality looks as a team really strong. The team is player-wise, I think, on the top of the table. He's 1v2-ing right now. This is crazy. Kabusch Jard. We can end, we can end, we can end. Big knockup, a huge chunk of damage, and it's all the Nexus. They all seem to have taken a break, or, or I don't know, but at least they're not playing good. They get really carried by Lulu comp, which is like the best comp they play. The swap as of now is like not working out, but they're obviously working on that. Power of Evil will be falling, and G2 collect the win against Origin. This could be the biggest deal of the spring split. And now the fight is on, but Shook has gone down! I think this game is ours, guys. Oh, yeah. Trust in yourself, okay? Win this game, okay? I trust you and I love you guys. Welcome to the European League Championship Series, where we are already halfway down the road to the Spring Playoffs. As you can see there, the Unicorns of Love had a little bit of interaction with the fans before the start of the show today. And there is Vitality setting up on stage as the first game will be the match of the week versus Origin. As you can see, the people are hyped, energetic, ready to go as we are across the halfway point here in the split in Berlin. Hello, I'm Ife Shog Zaportra, back behind the analyst desk alongside former LCS jungler and season one world champion, Lauri Cyanide Hapanen, as well as James Stress O'Leary. Do you ever get tired of hearing that? Never. Never, ever. Okay, here we go again. The season one world champion, Lauri Cyanide Hapanen. One more time, please. The season, okay, never mind. Each team <laughs> has only nine games left to play before the end of the split. And with that in mind, let's take a look at the standings. The tie for first is gone with H2K riding high. G2 holding second alone after a loss to Vitality. And then Fnatic Vitality and the UOL chasing the top of the tables. Yeah, I'd imagine in the future we'd see a G2, Fnatic, Origin and UOL kind of battle for these top spots. And I'd imagine also H2K and Vitality being at the top as well, like for sure. Now that's starting to get really interesting because only the top six teams will make it into the spring playoffs at the end of the split. And for the teams at the bottom of the table, it is now or never to keep their postseason hopes alive. It is, and one team that maybe it is now for is the Giants yesterday, finally picking up their first win in their match. And that means they've tied for ninth. A win today would actually have them tied for eighth, depending on the result with Splice. Well, actually, they play Splice, so yes, yes it would have them tied <laughs> for eighth. That's uh, funny how that works. But over the top side of the table, A2K with a, a split wide record so far of 1 0 against G2. They face off again today in a match that could have big implications for the top of the table, as Lowry just said. G2, H2K, all the way up there in that mix. Yeah, exactly, because with the playoffs on the horizon, important to remember that uh, more things are at stake besides pride and glory. Championship points and, of course, a ticket to the 2016 mid-season invitation. Well, you mentioned championship points. It's everything that's being played for throughout the entire year. Of course, championship points are accrued throughout the spring and summer split, depending on your placement in the playoffs. And the team at the end of the split or the end of the season with the most championship points is going to go to Worlds 2016. Of course, though, spring split does have implications with MSI. The winner is going to go and represent Europe there. Yeah, I remember when I, I was still playing, we didn't really care about spring split uh, that much, but I think the system's way better now because now it actually matters a lot more. But of course, like summer split is where the actual money is at. <laughs> it is. We've got ways to go, though, as the spring split continues in just a little while with our match of the week between the stacked rosters of Origin and Vitality. Then the Unicorns of Love will face Fnatic and then a fight for first between H2K and G2 Esports. But I actually have my eye on the fifth game, Splice versus Giants, because Giants is on the board. And we had Trashy here yesterday saying we're not going into that game any different, but it could be a turning point for both of them teams. It's a real tough matchup here. I mean, normally people overlook the bottom of the table matchups, but results like this are the important ones when we head towards playoffs and relegations. A win with the teams around you honestly separates a team between that eighth and seventh spot if they get there. Yeah, I do think though, like the game yesterday between uh, Giants and Rocket was probably like one of the worst games I've seen in LCS, like execution wise. So if I was Splice, I wouldn't really be that worried, but maybe they can, Giants can carry on the momentum and play even better today. Who knows? We will see what happens. And as Jungle Week continues, we'll keep posing questions to our ganking guests. Just tweet them at LOL Esports with the hashtag AskAJungler and we'll check out some of those later today. Now, without further ado, 
ado, let's jump into our match of the week between Origin and Vitality, who are only one win apart in the standings. Yesterday, OG going up against Splice had a good, slow, solid game. We had Sven, of course, with the Tristana cherry pick, and then Power of Evil, who had a really good game. I was talking to him yesterday, and he said, I feel like something clicked in the team this week, but how much can we really read into that win versus Splice? I honestly don't think it was that well executed. I mean, it was... Like Origin seemed in control the entire time, but at some points it just seemed like they didn't really know what to do and they just like went for the Baron and the Baron was actually extremely risky. Like Trashy even got in, uh, into the pit and like if Trashy got the smite in and got to steal the Baron there, I think actually Splice would have probably won that game. So it was like, I really dislike winning games in like because of a 50-50 smite basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think Origin will kind of feel the same as well for themselves, say, hey, look, that wasn't as, as crisp as we would have liked it against a team that, you know, is supposed to be so far down the tables compared to where Origin are at. Uh, Origin, it was more of the same for them. It was get Sven on this carry that is going to become just the all-encompassing monster later into the game. A little bit slower paced, Sven got himself a Tristana, which is not a pick that we're really seeing right at the top of priority, so that could get punished today by Vitality. I'm, I'm interested to see how that goes. Well, it is interesting versus Vitality. They took down the number one team, G2, yesterday, and we got some real comfort picks for coming in there yesterday. That was their strategy. Shook on Lee Sin, Thresh for Kasing. Uh, I don't know they'll get their hands on all of that today, but they seem to play to their strengths. They did, and Nuke Dog got that Gangplank as well. Yeah. <laughs> there was a funny set of tweets going around Definitely. with Nukes <laughs> talking about how Gangplank was available, shouldn't ever happen against Nuke Duck, and then lo and behold, G2 uh, even Yanko's opened. tweeting something. <laughs> it was all fun and games on Twitter yesterday. Yeah, I really hope Origin will have a bit better big can ban face because if Vitality do, Vitality do get these champions, I think it's going to be uh, almost over from the champ select. We'll see what happens. Of course, the matchup that we have our eye on, Kabashard versus Soaz. We've talked a lot about how Kabashard, he does really well in lane and in the game in general. He also gets a lot of help from Shook. And Soaz has been a question mark so far. Of course, you've been a teammate for him for so long. What do you make of our, everything so far? I mean, it's true Soaz is in a bit of a slump right now, but in the end, I still think like he's one of the smartest players I've ever known so he's gonna know that vitality is gonna play around that top lane and he knows he's most likely gonna get ganked but then again like vitality might also know that they know you know and then just not focus on the top lane so there might be a bit of mind games going on but we'll have to see how it plays out Exactly. I mean, it, you speak about Kabashad's strengths up there in the top lane. Uh, it, a lot of discussion recently about, about Soaz, and it's one of these things that when you've been around the scene for so long, I think to expect somebody every single game to be you know, dominating their competition is fairly tough. Soaz is the kind of player, though, that has gone through these waves, but it just is going to rely on him and the rest of the team taking a step back, fixing maybe some of the issues there. Maybe it's a meta thing. Maybe there's just you know, something that's not quite clicking with the top side of the map. We know that Soaz has fixed this in the past. We saw how dominant he was at the end of last year, so maybe we can see that again. Yeah, and Sinead, of course, you're not playing com competitively anymore, and it must become a little bit tedious. I mean, this is something you love, and this is a hobby turning into a job, but still doing it eight, nine, ten hours a day, every day. Yeah, I mean, it, it gets harsh, and that's why I quit in the end as well. Like, I just couldn't put it on the hours anymore to play at the top level. But I do think Sauce will rise again. Like, I mean, every, every player has their ups and downs. That's just how League of Legends works because of the meta game, because of personal motivations. And I, I really do think he will rise. There is something to be said, though, yesterday when you look at the Vitality game, um, where, you know, there was such a big lead that was gained early on. And then, uh, no, sorry, I'm, I'm confusing it a little bit with HUK, but you look at the way that Kabashad played in the game yesterday, there's always that opening that you can find. Like a player like Shook, who's very experienced, can find his way into a game. Yeah, we'll see. The players are about ready, so we're going to head inside and load up to Summoner's Rift. And as we go, we'll hear from Power of Evil on his mid lane matchup. I think Nuketug is really smart about how he wants to play the lane and when he goes aggressive, so I don't think he takes unnecessary risks. Sometimes he comes ahead, gets a solo kill, sometimes he falls a little bit behind, but I think overall he's a really smart guy who plays the lane really good. He has a really, uh, really wide champion pool, so he plays assassins, control mages, even supportive medanas like Lulu, and he's really hard to predict, I think.